We want to stick with the vaccine, coronavirus vaccine. The big driver in today was market was Pfizer. The data that we got out there, early data saying that it's a COVID-19 vaccine trial shows that it's more than 90% effective. We want to bring in Abby Hagledge. She's a Yahoo Lifestyle writer and editor. And Abby, you're closely following this story. The efficacy rate when it comes to Pfizer, Pfizer's news today, was just more than 90%. How encouraging is this result because we've been hearing researchers caution that a vaccine might only be 60, maybe 70% effective. Yeah, absolutely. This this news was really surprising to the, the experts that I've spoken to today. Uh, you know, they, as you mentioned, they expected the efficacy rate to be closer to 50, 60 percent. Uh, the FDA cutoff rate was 50 percent for approval of a COVID-19 vaccine. 90 percent is extremely high. Uh, out of 44,000 uh, participants, it's, it's really shocking. Now, the number could absolutely change. Uh, as the research continues, but 90%, I, I think it shows that this new mRNA vaccine has a lot of promise and it's great news. Uh, Abby, has anyone addressed the fact that one, it's not so unheard of to have efficacy that high. I mean, measles, smallpox, the, the efficacy for those vaccines was 90 plus percent. But the fact that all these different vaccines in development, do they now have a threshold or would we still have potentially the Pfizer vaccine, maybe the Johnson & Johnson single dose that may not have a 90% efficacy, we don't know yet, but that some of us are going to get one that isn't quite as strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a great point. I mean, I, I think it's it's tough to reach the 97% efficacy of a measles vaccine, and I don't really foresee us getting there. But I think that Moderna, which you know uses a similar technology as this vaccine, they may come forward with a similar percentage. Uh, this is an entirely new technology that hasn't been used in vaccines in the past. Um, so we're really kind of starting something different here and developing a process that these scientists haven't really seen. Uh, there's only, you know, 100,000 and people that have received this type of vaccine. I think that it could be high, but you're right that it might change. And given mutations in the virus, you know, we could see the number drop down. I mean, given that fact, the fact that there hasn't been any RNA product that has ever been approved by regulators, what are your thoughts just in terms of people being hesitant to take the vaccine? Because we've heard time and time again, the surveys have shown that Americans don't necessarily trust these pharma giants, especially because we're getting this done in such a short amount of time. It's an excellent point, and it's something that every researcher I speak with is grappling with. You know, there's a reason that vaccines typically take, you know, a minimum of four years to develop, and that's because you need long-term data to really know uh, how safe they are. And the thing is, we're probably just not going to have that with this vaccine. We've reached exponential spread of the virus, and really the only way to stop exponential spread is either a lockdown, which uh, we've tried, or a vaccine. So I think people will have to make the decision for themselves. As of now, there aren't any serious side effects that have cropped up, and that's encouraging. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we'll have to put our faith in science and hope that nothing more serious emerges. And one of the things that I kept hearing people point out today is that this is a blind committee. It's not actually Pfizer that they report the results, but the actual tabulation of what's happening is out of Pfizer's hands. That said, history shows that phase three trials after the fact, and it takes years and years, only a 30 to 35% success rate. So even if they got that uh, emergency use, uh, use authorization, we don't know the long-term efficacy, or do we, from what they're telling us now? No, we definitely don't. I mean, that's that's why a lot of you know scientists today are trying to temper the enthusiasm that people are feeling. 90% is a great number, but will we actually have a safe vaccine? And will this continue to be something that that performs this well? We're not really sure. I mean, there's there's a lot to be answered here that that's not coming through Pfizer at this point. I mean, I don't know if you can answer this, but I think this is also an interesting point to make just in terms of how do we know who or do we know? It's a better way to put it. Do we know who is going to be prioritized first at this point, just in terms of who gets the vaccine? Because there's been different, I guess, scenarios put out there, whether it should be the frontline workers, whether it should be the elderly population. What are you hearing? Yeah, the, the CDC has specific guidelines sort of outlining uh, who will be the first to get the vaccine. Uh, essential workers are uh, top of the list, specifically healthcare workers. Um, 
But I think an important thing to pay attention to as well is that earlier in the year, teachers were deemed essential workers, which means that teachers will likely be high on the list as well. Uh, so people who are most vulnerable, teachers, healthcare workers, you know, they're going to be the first round of people getting this vaccine. And that's a lot of the reason that people, including President-elect Biden, are saying that most people are not going to have access to a vaccine, uh, you know, at the earliest until the spring, probably of 2021. All right, Abby Hagledge, great to have you on. Yahoo Lifestyle writer and editor.